What's up? Sorry, that song ended a little faster than I thought it was going to. Uh, but we'll get it all together. I was also a little moved by it. I was hands raised. I was singing. I don't know that we think about that enough. But those of us who call Jesus Lord are sons and daughters of the king. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Speaking of being sons and daughters, speaking of being sons and daughters, I don't get to do this often, but today I do get to. Today is my mother-in-law's birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Dee Dee. We love you. Interestingly enough, 37 years old. 37. Don't do the math. It's good to be back. If, if you attend Wellspring regularly, you know um, I've been off for a few weeks. You guys are always kind enough to uh, give me some time. <laughs> My wife calls it our, uh, our finish line trip. We've got three kids who are all in school, all do sports. And so by the end of May, we're about just ready to pass out. <laughs> you know, all the parents in the room are like, we know. And so, yeah, we always take a few weeks off and... Um, What's cool is God always speaks in those moments. Um, And uh, over the last, really last few months, but particularly this last month, God's just been been speaking. And so um, one of my privileges is when God teaches me something, I get to teach you. And so uh, what I want us to talk about today is is really something God's just been doing in my life and doing in my heart over the last uh, really probably six to eight months and um, my prayer is that what he's been teaching me will be as relevant and life-changing for you as, as it's been for me. So what I want to do to kind of get started, I got, I got a question, um, and I want you to raise your hand. I want you to answer, how many of you can read and listen to music at the same time? Freaks. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Uh, every time I ask that question, people raise their hand, and I'm like, we got to talk. I, uh, I, I am clearly an easily distracted person. I'm very easily distracted. I, I can't read um, when, when there's any noise going on. Remember, even when I was in school, like if I had homework to do, I had to have complete silence. Any, any complete silence people in here? Like if you want to concentrate, you, come on. That's what I'm talking about. We need to pray for these other people. And all their incomplete work. Uh, no, I, I do. And that, that's actually not true. Like, there's something. It was weird. I could always do math and have noise. Math I could do. Uh, but, like, if I was writing a paper or right now, you know, every week I write a sermon, um, man, I have to have complete silence. It's so bad, I don't even come to the office on Tuesdays anymore. I write from home. I go up into this room where I can't even hear anything happening. Sometimes I'll even put on uh, noise-canceling headphones if I need to. Because for me, if I'm going to concentrate, if I'm going to produce content, I I just need complete and total silence. I I don't know why. I'm very easily, very easily distracted. Um, And even for those of you who who are... Read with music on, people, whatever the world that means. Uh, I'm sure that you have seasons, you have moments as well, where you have to clear out some distractions so you can focus. Uh, Maybe, you know, maybe you're married and you and your spouse decide, hey, you know what, we're going to wait. We're going to have this conversation after the kids are in bed. Right? Or maybe uh, when you're in a car and your friend starts telling you, uh, a struggle they're going through. Maybe you'll just kind of casually turn the radio down so that you can talk. Pet peeve of mine as well. If I'm in the car with you and the radio is loud, we're not going to talk. We're just not. Like, turn it down. It's not that hard. Just turn it down. Uh, maybe you have gotten a phone call or you're at a restaurant. And so you step outside so you can focus on a call. Maybe you sleep with blackout curtains and eye masks. 
so that you can focus on your sleep. I don't know what it is, but my assumption is all of us in the room have, have figured out there, there are certain times we need to be able to focus a little better than others, and so we eliminate distractions because we understand there's an inverse correlation. The more distraction, the less we can focus. The less distraction, the more we can focus. You know this, I knew this. We actually learned this at a very young age. Children are spectacular at blocking out distractions. How do I know? Because I'm raising three of them. And this is why when they are locked in on the video game or locked in on YouTube or locked in whatever it is they're doing, you have to call their name 5, 10, 12 times because they're focusing and they are blocking out the distraction. Parents, the distraction is you. (laughs) And no, we don't love this when we need them. But we understand this is something that humans understand how to do. And what God's been teaching me, really for, like I said, last six months, but the really last month, last two months, has just really come to focus, is, is that there are times, there are moments, there are seasons, almost daily, where I wasn't doing a good enough job And I needed to learn how to block out distractions so I could hear from my Heavenly Father. And not just hear from my Heavenly Father, experience my Heavenly Father. Be with my Heavenly Father. Because there were things He wanted to teach me. And there were were things he wanted to do in my heart, and there were things he wanted to do in my soul, and there were things he wanted to do in my mind, but he wasn't able to because I would never stop long enough to let him. I would never take the steps needed to turn down the distractions so I could hear from God. Now, I'm sure I'm alone in this. I'm sure you guys are like, man, I'll pray for you. We're really good at that. You know, but there's a verse that God has just been bringing to my mind over and over and over and over and over for the past few months. And, and if you grew up in church like I did, you've heard this verse before. It's from the Psalms. Um, it's actually from Psalm 46. And it's eight simple words. Eight simple words that are changing my life. Eight simple words that I believe if you let him today, God will use to begin to change yours as well. Eight simple words, and here they are. Be still and know that I am God. Be honest. How much of your day when you're awake do you spend still quiet open listening for God I'll go first not a lot now I did a lot for God It's my job. But what he's been teaching me, and hopefully you, is did you know that you can get so busy working for God that you never hear from God? Isn't that fascinating? And I think that's why he gives us this command, because it's a command, by the way. It's not a suggestion. It's not a, hey, this might help you guys. It's a command. It's an imperative sentence. Be still. The unspoken subject of that sentence is you, me, us. Be still and know that he is God. 
In other words, he's saying the more active you are, the more distractions you have, the more you try to do, the less it will be apparent in your day-to-day lives that he's God and we're not. And you're like, I would never claim to be God. I understand. We don't claim it. We just behave like it. We worry like it. We work like it. We argue like it. And it's into that moment our Heavenly Father says, hey, 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 here's my promise. If you'll get quiet, if you'll get still, you'll find me. You'll experience me. Now, here's the problem. Silence is difficult. Silence is awkward. I can't stand silence unless I'm being productive. (laughs) If I'm working, if I'm producing, I love silence. But if I don't have anything to do, silence is weird. (laughs) Turn the TV on. Turn the radio on. I need some noise. Anybody feel this way? It's too quiet. You ever been to a restaurant, like right when they open, and you're the only people in the restaurant, and they haven't turned the music on yet? Feels like death, (laughs) right? Here, let me show you. Let me show you what silence will feel like, okay? Watch this. We're going to be silent for 15 seconds. It's going to feel like an eternity. Ready? Go. Wasn't that awful? (laughs) Wasn't that awful? You're like, what? What? I got to go. I got to get up. I got to get out of here. Why do you think that is? Why do you think the very thing our Heavenly Father commands us to do, be still and know that I'm God? Who's programmed us to despise the stillness? Who's programmed us to despise the silence? Who's convinced us that we have to work and we have to produce and we have to keep going and it all hinges on us? We do it to ourselves. Society does it. Culture does it. But ultimately, I believe it's our enemy. Everything he does is designed to deplete. And our unease with silence, I believe, I know it was robbing me. And I think it could be robbing us of the joys of knowing our Father. Now, the good news is our Heavenly Father knew this would be a struggle. And so he gave us a practice. We talk about these from time to time. We call these spiritual practices, spiritual disciplines. These are, these are things we can do to help us know more about our Heavenly Father. Reading the Bible is a spiritual discipline. Praying is a spiritual discipline. But there's a specific discipline he's given the church, his people, to allow us to step into silence. To step into a place where we can hear more clearly from our Heavenly Father. And it is called fasting. Now, if you're unfamiliar with fasting, let me go ahead and tell you what it is. Fasting is the voluntary act of abstaining from something for a specific period of time to focus more of our time and attention on God. Now, when most people hear fasting, especially if you grew up in church, you think of fasting from food. Uh, Maybe if you have a test coming up, even the doctor will say you need to fast for 12 hours, for 24 hours to get ready. And so it's understandable that your first thought when I say fasting is to skip a meal or to skip multiple meals. Um, If you grew up in church, maybe you're familiar with the most, kind of most famous fast that people know about uh, is the fast that many people do during the season of Lent. Um, If you grew up uh, Catholic, if you, for the first 10 years of my life, I was actually Methodist, and so we, 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 
celebrated Lent. Lent is actually the 40 days leading up to Easter. It begins on Ash Wednesday. Uh, Side note, it's why the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday is called Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras. The whole idea was blow it out on Tuesday and then we'll be good for 40 days. Like that was the way they thought about it. Eat everything you want on Tuesday because for 40 days we're cutting it all out. But no, the, the idea of Lent was to fast from a certain type of food, from something, for 40 days as a way to create stillness, as a way to create some silence in your life so that you can hear more clearly from God. But you don't just have to fast from food. You can fast from anything. Anything in your life that could create a distraction. Anything in your life that might could make it more difficult for you to hear from God, you can fast from. This is where parents always side up and say, where do I go to fast from my children? I will, I will fast from that, man. 40 days, let's do it. I'm just kidding. But now fasting, this idea of creating silence, creating stillness, is a gift from our Heavenly Father. Let me explain what some of the benefits of fasting. Number one, it increases our dependence on God. And you understand this specifically, like if you fast from food, if you didn't eat food for a day, you would feel hungry. You might would feel weak by the end of the day. And in that season, you could be reminded, hey, God is my strength. God is my sustainer. But it, incre- it increases our dependence on God regardless of what we fast from. Because anytime we create stillness, anytime we create silence, and we listen, he says, you're going to know me. When you're still, you're going to know that I'm God. And that's what fasting does. Not only does it increase our dependence, it also creates more time and attention for God in our lives. Of course it does. Because anytime we choose to remove something from our day-to-day lives and fill that space with God, we've created more space for him. Fasting also has a benefit in that it heightens spiritual and mental alertness as we focus less on us and more on God. Again, this is, this is simple. As we turn down distractions, we turn up the voice of God. In fact, that's really the benefit of fasting. Fasting basically turns down the distractions and turns up the voice of God in our lives. When we intentionally choose to silence anything in our lives. When we choose to silence mealtime. When we choose to silence the radio. When we choose to silence television. When we choose to silence the news. When we choose to silence social media. When we choose to silence these things for a moment, we create space and the distractions are turned down and the voice of God just turns up. Listen, not because he's speaking louder, but because we're listening more clearly. You know how as parents, when we're trying to get our children's attention, and they are playing the video games, or they're locked into the phone, or they're doing whatever. As parents, what do we do when it's dinner time? We go, and we say, dinner time, if they don't come, we don't go. Oh, well, they're just not going to eat tonight, because we know what's going to happen later, right? We get closer and closer, and we get louder and louder until they finally listen. Most of the time, our Heavenly Father is a little different. I like to say our Heavenly Father is a gentleman. He waits to be invited. And so, unless it's an emergency, and I don't really know that you want God, if it's such a big deal where he's got to shake you into alertness, trust me, you will remember it. But on a day-to-day basis, he wants to speak. But if the distractions are too loud, he says, okay, I'll try tomorrow. Because he waits to be invited. And fasting, ceasing, creating silence in our lives creates that space for us to hear what our Heavenly Father 
is trying to teach us. When Jesus was on the earth, he fasted. And he actually taught about fasting. In fact, here's what he said. He said, and when you fast. He didn't say if. He said when. In other words, if you are a follower of me, if you're a follower of Jesus, there will be moments, there will be times, there will be seasons where you will fast, where you will create space, you will create silence so that my Father can speak to you. It's a part of what we're called to do. In fact, he only gives one stipulation for fasting. He doesn't tell us what to fast from. He doesn't tell us how often to fast. He doesn't tell us how long to fast. He doesn't tell us any of those things. He says one thing about fasting. And this is it. When you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. See, in Jesus' day, there were people who would perform religious acts in an effort to impress people. I know, crazy, right? Who would ever do that now? But in Jesus' day, it was a struggle. Because the people were allowing other people to be their validator. They were looking for the praise of men to affirm what was in their hearts. They were so afraid of being still and knowing that God was God that they let other people become gods. And so they performed. And they'd fast. The fast he's talking about back then would have been food. He's talking to a religious group called the Pharisees. And they would fast twice a week. And when they would fast twice a week, they would, they would look pale. And they would post on social media, I'm so hungry, hashtag I love Jesus. <laughs> um, you know, they would, you know, they'd go on Instagram and they'd put a picture of food, like not eating this today, hashtag blessed. Um, they wanted everyone to know what they were doing. They wanted the praise of man. And this is a universal principle for anything we do for our Heavenly Father. If we try to serve God to impress people, guess what? Here's what he says. I'll tell you the truth. That's the only reward they'll ever get. It's the only thing we'll ever get. You try to impress people, you'll get it. You'll gain men, but you miss God. And I'll tell you, as a pastor, as a person who for the last almost 15 years regularly has to get on stage and prevent, uh, present a sermon multiple times, and in some ways some people could consider this a performance, I will tell you this is true. There have been seasons where I've been on here to impress people. So they would come to me and say, man, that was really good. Wow, that bottom line was great. Wow. And that's what they would say. Only reward I got. It led to hollowness, emptiness, and exhaustion. If you're honest, you've probably experienced the same thing. That's what happens when we perform for people. And what Jesus is saying is, hey, 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 hey. This, this fasting, this gift I've given you is to create space for me and you. So when you decide to create some silence, to create some space, make it about me and you. Don't spend all your time looking around to see who else notices. See who else says, good job. He says, in fact, he says, when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. I would suggest doing that even when you're not fasting. <laughs> That's just me then no one will notice that you're fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. Watch this. And your father who sees everything will reward you. What's the reward? That we'll know he's God. 
that we will be able to walk every single day with the confidence that there is a God of the universe who is in charge of everything, who loves you with everything he has and who has the power to raise the dead. The fact that he exists and you're not him. (sighs) Thank you, God, that I'm not God. But it's only when we stop. It's only when we cease. It's only when we fast. It's only when we create space. It's only when we create the silence. It's only when we stop performing. It's only when we stop producing that we discover, oh, yeah, God's the one who makes the world go round, not me. God's the one who gave me these gifts, strengths, talents, and abilities. God's the one who did these things in my life. God's the one who provides for my family. God's the one who teaches my children. God's the one who's opening doors. Not me. But we never see that. We never learn that. We never experience that. Unless we stop. Unless we create silence to see how God is speaking. Now, you may have a question, and I know I've had it from time to time, and it's this. Okay, so if we're supposed to fast, how often? How often should we fast? And the answer is so gloriously wonderful. Our Father takes care of us so well. The answer is simple. It's as often as we need to. This is your gift. You got a big career decision coming up that you want to make sure you get right fast. Have a struggle in your life, a struggle in your heart you can't quite overcome fast. Jesus fasted for 40 days before he began his public ministry. Unless you are the son of God, I don't recommend that. King David fasted Out of repentance, he had committed a grave sin. And he wanted to create space, not to perform for God, but so that he could hear from his father. To be reminded, hey, yeah, you blew it, but I've paid for those sins. You're forgiven. You're restored. Let's keep moving. In Acts, we see the early church fast whenever they need to make a very big decision. And so the question is really not how often should you fast. The question is how often do you want to experience the benefits of fasting? Because remember, fasting simply is our opportunity to turn down the distractions and turn up the voice of God in our lives. So how often do you want that gift? See, I think there are different seasons for different types of fasting. I think the first thing we need to do is be open with our Heavenly Father and say, all right, where am I distracted? Where, Father, am I maybe moving in busyness? And I'm so busy being busy that I'm not quiet enough to hear you speak. I know that is a huge struggle in my life. And did you know your Father even gives you a gift for that? It was an ancient practice given down to the Israelites that I believe still has weight for the church as well. It's called the Sabbath. Six days you work. On the Sabbath day, you cease working. You know what the Sabbath is? It is a fast from work. It is a fast from effort. It is a fast from performance. It is a 24-hour period where we stop working to be reminded God still works. I don't know what the distraction is in your life. Maybe the distraction in your life, I'll be, I'll be honest, this used to be one for me, is the news. You watch the news and you just feel yourself getting more and more and more angry and anxious and nervous about the world. What would happen if you fasted from the news? What would happen if you decided to create some stillness? Because do you know why you get so anxious watching the news? You get anxious watching the news 
Because at some point you became convinced it was your job to solve it. And you don't know how. And you're overwhelmed. We heard yesterday there might be a civil war in Russia. Above my pay grade. (laughs) Not a thing I can do about it. In newsflash, not a thing any of us in the room can do about it. Unless, like, does Jason Bourne go here? That'd be kind of cool. I'd like to know that. Just find me later. Do that. I'd be like, ah. But no, when all we have is noise, when all we have is chaos, when we are constantly just fed with you've got to perform more, you've got to do better, the world is messed up, all these things, it creates this anxiety in us. And Jesus is challenging us to believe the promise his heavenly Father made through the psalmist. Create space, create moments, create seasons to stop and be still and know that he is God. That's what we're doing next week. Two Sundays a year, we don't gather together. Two Sundays a year, here and the Sunday after Christmas. Just two Sundays a year. We stop. We create space for all of our amazing volunteers and our staff who work so hard. Two Sundays a year, we're still And next Sunday, I hope you get still. It's not an invitation to ignore God. In fact, it's taking a lot of excuses off the table. You don't have to get up. You don't have to get your kids dressed. You don't have to be here on time. You don't have to worry about what's happening later. You can wake up next Sunday and you and your family and just be still before your Heavenly Father. Thank Him for the gifts in your life and allow Him to speak. In fact, as we close, I want to give you an opportunity right now to do that very thing. We're going to end with just two minutes, two minutes of silence. And we're going to have music because I don't want you freak it out but just two minutes to begin practicing stillness to not think about tomorrow to not think about what's next but to simply say Heavenly Father I sit quietly before you remind me that you're God So bow your heads and close your eyes and invite your Father to speak while you are silent.
Heavenly Father, I pray that this silence, I pray that this two minutes will be the beginning of a new practice. And may that practice lead to a fresh understanding of you, a deeper experience with you, and a yearning for more. Father, I pray that you will show each of us this week where we need to create space, where we need to create silence, the distraction we need to fast from so that we can be reminded that you're God and we're not. Father, I pray your Holy Spirit falls. I pray your Holy Spirit moves in our hearts in this season. God, I pray you give us a courage and a conviction to leave this place and adopt silence. To begin to make fasting a part of our daily worship of you. I pray that even now you show us specific moments, specific activities, specific times where we can schedule it in our day. And we resolve here and now to be still so that we can know that you are God so that we can fall more in love with you and that your spirit can continue to do the work you want to do in our hearts to make us the men and women you've designed us to be to play our role in your story of redeeming your world. Father, we're here. We want it. And we promise to embrace stillness, to embrace silence. Because we want to know you more. We love you, we thank you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.